What's going on, boxing fans? Joe Williams with the distance. I'm here to give you my number one heavyweight. And I know you all, all you guys are wondering who my number one is, but let me backtrack a little bit. My number five heavyweight was Mike Tyson. My number four was George Foreman. My number three was Larry Holmes, and my number two was Muhammad Ali. Some of you guys may have figured out by now who my number one heavyweight is, and my number one heavyweight is Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis because because three words describe him best. Icon, legend, and hero. And and these are some points I'm gonna gonna try to make and bring up for the for this for my number one today. And his accomplishments in boxing and outside of boxing are many. He holds all these he holds all kinds of world records for for heavyweight boxing and you know he and on top of that, you know, he's in, he influenced, you know, a couple of the best, a couple of, two other um, of the best pound for pound fighters, you know, ever in boxing, Sugar Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali. So you one has to wonder if we didn't have a Joe Lewis, would we have a Muhammad Ali? Would we have a Sugar Ray Robinson? You know, Sarah. You know, will we even have Henry Armstrong? Will we have even a Benny Leonard, or or any other colorful per personality in boxing? And though Joe Lewis could not be himself, Joe Lewis had to do what was approving of the white audience. They wanted to make him a marketable hero after Jack John. I mean, well, they wanted to make him a, a marketable hero after Jack. Jack Dempsey, but they didn't want him to be like Jack Johnson, so they gave him all these rules and boundaries, and such as he couldn't be pictured with white women, he couldn't gloat over opponents, and stuff like that, and they just, he wasn't allowed to be himself. He had to basically pay for another man's mistakes, who was Jack Johnson, who was unpopular with, with white audiences at the time. but. Joe Lewis, uh, Joe, Joe Lewis was perhaps one of the was perhaps maybe the greatest heavyweight of all time. See, some people have Muhammad Ali and Joe Lewis in front of Joe Lewis. I have Joe Lewis in front of Muhammad Ali because it it was a different era, it was a different time, and in Ali's case, you know he didn't fight the same fighters or in the same era. Is Joe Lewis because Joe Lewis fought in a tougher era, though Ali had the better opposition. But with but one has to wonder: Could Joe Lewis go to go into the seventies and be a champion, and can Ali go back to the thirties and forties and and become a champion? Now with Ali, Ali fought in the time in the beginning of the sanctioning body time. Joe Lewis was. Joe Lewis fought when there was only one world champion. He defended that championship about 25 times in, in about 11 years, 11 years and 10 months against 13, I believe 13 people um, were considered the bum of the month. Um, I know there was a few champions in that, a few top contenders. He did face you know, a few future champions and defeat them like Jersey Joe Walcott and he did defeat Billy Kahn who was the light heavyweight champion but you know on the, on the Joe Lewis Joe Lewis you know he he pretty much made um made sacrifices for himself so that later on down the line another more fighters can live by free will and Joe Lewis couldn't live by free will. He had to pretty much take what whatever was given to him and stuff. And it kind of it was like America was reluctant of having another black champion. And Joe Lewis just kept winning. He kept winning, and then in nineteen, I want to say thirty, thirty three, thirty four, he lost to Max Schmeling. You know, lost his focus and stuff. And Joe Lewis is becoming a hero 
for for many Americans, African Americans and whites. And Joe Lewis was becoming a hero. He was becoming very very popular among communities, and he was he was he was just beating everybody, and not having a problem with it. And then Max Schmeling beat him. Now Max Schmeling was was actually I believe a former world champion, and and you know and they thought that Joe Lewis wasn't wasn't gonna have a problem with him and Smelling beat him, knocked him out in the twelfth round. Now see in this in this era, Joe Lewis Joe Lewis was pretty much looked at as the Messiah of boxing, as you could say. He was gonna bring boxing up to this high level. This higher level and and see this loss was was just a shock. It was a upset. You know, nobody expected him to lose. It was like when Tyson was when Tyson lost to Buster Douglas. You know, nobody expected him to lose. But then again, Max Schmeling is a former champion. And at the time I believe he weighed in at like hundred and ninety eight pounds, which is small. Very small for a heavyweight these days. But you know, Schmeling was a hundred and ninety three, Lewis was one ninety eight and a half. And you know, just compare that to the Klitschko's who weigh weigh in over two hundred and forty, two hundred and fifty pounds. So you know, both of these guys, you know, are going in, they're fighting. Joe Lewis loses and then you know, he goes on, he fights a few other opponents like one one fighter, Jack Sharkey. Jack Sharkey was another solid heavyweight fighter at the time. I believe his son went on to become a wrestler or something, but but anyway he went on, he fought Jack Sharkey, and he went on, he got a tile shot against James J. Braddock, who is known as the Cinderella Man, I believe. I believe there was a movie about him. He defeated Cinderella, the Cinderella Man, James J. Braddock, and, and in this fight, he was actually knocked down in like the first round. And you see, and you see the heart of Joe Lewis in this matchup, because... He went down in the in the first round, and he just got right back up. And I guess because the times were much different, you know, he he probably had to get right back up. But back then, you know, he was knocked down. He got right back up, like a split second later, and then and then he knocked him out later on in the fight, and he and he put Braddock completely to sleep. It was. I don't remember what punch it was, but he just put him to sleep. It it was a ugly knockout. He punched him, hit him right in his jaw, flush, and Brad kind of made this turn, just rolled over, and it was just and it's those knockouts that you look for from fighters these days. It's how you look for fighters to close the show, and Joe Lewis knew how to close the show. He knew how he. He knew how to he knew how to close the show very well and see with Joe Lewis, he can knock you out with any punch. He can knock you out with an uppercut, right hook, right cross, any of those punches he could have knocked you out with. And it and it was dangerous. It was it was very dangerous and on top of that he fought more often than fires these days. See fires have to take in consideration when they fight, you know, two or three times out of the year, these fighters back then were fighting eight or nine times out of the year. And and see now, see now that's thanks to the sanctioning bodies. If there was one champion, um, best best believe they would pro- more than likely have to fight more often, like back in these times. But Joe Lewis, Joe Lewis, you know, um. Fought way way more often, and and tougher, much tougher um, fights. Though the quality of opposition was not as good, I'm saying the fights were tougher. As in, it was a different style back then. Everything it was a hard nosed smash mouth style, and Joe Lewis fought in that era, and he and he stayed relevant. He stayed relevant for 11 years. 
But I'm going to stop for this part right here and I'm going to get into World War II. But this is the end of part one. Thanks for watching this part.